Welcome to the Stateless Codecast. This is episode one in the series, Getting Started with Rails 7. So Rails 7 is out, released December 15th, 2021. This is December 17th, 2021. And I am, I apologize for my voice. Still getting over a cold, but wanted to get this to um, the series out as quickly as possible. So I'm leapfrogging some of the other videos that I already have recorded, and I'm going to go through the getting started guide with Rails 7 um, that kind of provides you an overview of how to kind of set up your first application in Ruby on Rails. I'm going to go about this in a uh, I'll deviate slightly from the Rails Getting Started guide in that I'm going to try to do this in a test-driven development uh, methodology. So things like the when it tells you to create a model, I'm going to write the test for the model and stuff like that. Uh, if you want a crash course on this, right on the Rails homepage, there's a, um, a video here by DHH, the creator of Rails, that goes through uh, pretty much a lot of the material covered in the gets getting started guide including deploying in uh, 34 minutes it's definitely worth the watch but he uses a lot of shortcuts that uh, you might not necessarily want to use right away as a beginner things like generating an entire scaffold for your article um, and a few of those other things so uh, what I hope to do is get through the getting started guide and then add in the other things like um, broadcasting from that um, aren't in the getting started guide and just kind of give a flavor for those. So if you go to rubyonrails.org up top here in the, the newly redesigned site, choose guides and then start here getting started with Rails. Um, the, the guide assumes that you've got uh, some um, programming experience. Um, I'll try to explain the concepts as they come and um, those things, but um, that's kind of where we're going to pick up here. The There's a good list of um, free programming books and everything here. So uh, Rails, we'll just um, go through the summary here. What is Rails? So it's a, a web application development framework. Um, using the Ruby language. So there are a bunch of different languages that you can write web applications in, both on the client side and the server side. Uh, Rails is a full stack web development framework um, that's primarily with Ruby. You do use some JavaScript. You can't really avoid uh, JavaScript in uh, web development, at least on the front end. Um, and it's, uh, it's got a philosophy of the Rails way. So one of the things that uh, if you follow Rails convention, rather than trying to do custom configuration, you're going to get a lot of productivity uh, out of the amount of labor that you're, um, that you're doing here. So Rails has generators. If you name your models correctly so that the database table gets named correctly and your controller is, a, um, is named correctly. So an uppercase singular model with a lowercase plural table name, lowercase, uh, I mean, uppercase plural controller name for that resource. Um, all those things will wind up um, working almost like magic for you. Um, when, and you can get a lot of bang for your, for your buck in terms of labor. Um, it notes here that um, Rails is opinionated um, it makes an assumption that there's a best way to do things. Uh, obviously, it hasn't found it yet because Rails is all constantly changing. So uh, the, there are various levels of opinion being opinionated. So Python is similarly opinionated as a language. Ruby is not opinionated. Like if you want to go and patch the kernel class, Ruby is going to say, okay, we're going to uh, let you do that and uh, you're responsible for doing that. So Ruby... Uh, is kind of an an anarchy, and uh, Rails is kind of a a, a homeward news association within that anarchy that has uh, a bit more uh, opinion and structure about how it goes about doing things. 
Um, you don't want to repeat yourself. I don't know if I just said that, that would have been ironic. Uh, so we'll go to the next section here, creating a new Rails project. So I think this guide is out of date slightly. So you're creating a new Rails project. Um, you can call it um, whatever you want. I'm gonna um, probably call it Rails 7 getting started or something like that. Um, but it will still be a blog. The um, and where it's outdated, I think, is in the prerequisites here. So uh, Ruby, SQLite 3, um, you can add it here, or MariaDB or Postgres. Like, you just need some sort of a database backend. Um, Node.js and Yarn are no longer required for, um, for installing and, and running Rails by default. Uh, so I'm going to actually go in and disable node in my terminal when we get to that point just to show that you can do it without without these things now in Rails 7. Installing Ruby. So I have another video on installing RVM and Ruby. I already have Ruby on my system. So if I can type. Seriously, there. So, 3.0.2, and I'll go in. So, node and yarn. I have I have running there. Um, so I'm gonna. NVM deactivate. So now if I go node and yarn, the command is not found. So next step is SQLite 3. I'm running Ubuntu, so this is already going to be installed. And it is. Um, installing Node.js and Yarn, I'm going to explicitly skip here and then install Rails. Before I do that, I'm going to create, so I already got, maybe I don't have a version of Rails. All right, I'll just install it as is. I was going to create a gem set if I didn't already have Rails, but. that pause and let it complete all right so we're done now install so I now should be able to do rails V it comes back as rails 7.0 and we're ready to continue so now we're going to um, create the uh, the Rails application. I'm in the parent folder where I want to create this, and I'll actually um, make sure I don't have something called blog. I do not. So I'll just actually call this blog when I create the command when I run the command here. So Rails new blog, hit enter. And I'm gonna leave this running because it's different. It looks different than uh, previous. So before when you did this, you can see import map installing right now. The, and it's done. So Rails 6, kind of 5.1 uh, through 6.2, you would have this situation where after running that um, Rails uh, new, it would also have to run a yarn install and, and take care of all your um, JavaScript dependencies with Webpacker and Webpack and everything. So 
Um, we'll go to CD blog now. And I will now let's open up the directory here. So in this um, directory, you've got um, your gem file, which is using, uh, you can see it's, it's fairly short. And some of the, the items that you, um, that are commented out here, you can, um, you can uncomment them, add them back in. You can add any other number of uh, gems from the Ruby gems. Um, dot org um, site there uh, your gem file dot lock provides um, kind of some more detail about your um, your versions and dependencies but you can see it's a, it's a fairly for uh, something as robust as rails and compared to previous versions of rails um, it's a fairly um, small set of things that you're required to have by default that you have by default um, just your Ruby version file, um, just your rack up file for, um, for, for rack based um, servers, your rake file. This is the README. So by default, this just kind of gives you a, um, an example of how, like, things you want to do in your README. Your app here so rails uses a model view controller framework so the model deals with the um, kind of your it, uh, object relational management of your database uh, records so uh, let's say that later as we do this we'll have an article um, so there'll be an articles table in the database there'll be an article model you can do things in the model, like have methods associated with it. You can have uh, callbacks before save, after save, before validate, um, validation rules, things like that, that uh, are related to your, your model. Uh, next is your controller. So your controller, you think about the um, request response cycle of a web page. So you go to a web page like, um, guides.rubyonrails.org, press that in, and hit enter. That's making a request to the web server, and then it will come back with a response, and that response will have HTML in it, or um, if you're doing an API, it'll have JSON, or if you're enterprise API, it'll have XML or something like that. But um, so that's where your, your controllers are housed. So if you had, um, thinking still in terms of articles in this uh, controller you would have um, so index would be show your list of articles um, show would be show a single article create uh, new would be your form to create a new article create is the action after that form submitted to save it to the database um, and then edit your existing article update destroy um, so th those are the standard um, seven route, seven resources that you have for any one of these um, items like uh, an article or a um, a D and D character, something like that. Um, and then in the views are kind of you can see here we've got an application. Um, file here. So for each of the controllers, um, in most cases, they'll either render a view, like if you've got show, it'll show the, the, the different attributes that are that you've decided to um, display in your um, in your HTML, and then you go into this view and actually do them. Um, the, the views are in um, 
embedded Ruby, so HTML.erb files, and you have raw HTML, and then if you are doing um, Ruby, you'll have this, uh, this syntax here uh, with the open bracket, um, the bracket percent, and then equals if you're writing something, or if you were just doing something that's pure Ruby and you're not actually writing to the view file, then you would just have the uh, percent without the equals there. Uh, so, and then if you want to, you can go and it, um, I've already kind of given an overview of the, the main sections that you'll deal with. Um, the other important one um, is your tests. So by default, um, Rails has um, mini test as its uh, test suite. You can, if you want to, replace it with RSpec. Typically, when I'm doing Rails applications, I stick with mini test. Um, it um, it's well supported, well documented, uh, specifically for Rails. So that's what I typically go with. So to finish up with this video, I'm going to get us the rest of the way to getting the um, to showing the server. I'm not going to go through the uh, the rest of the Hello Rails section here. We'll do that. Um, take that up in the next video, but I want to at least get us to kind of that hello world um, situation. So um, typically go into another tab and then you can bin rails server or just bin rails s um, will start your web server and it goes to your local host port 3000. So open up a tab here. And localhost 3000. And you can see we are now at the, uh, the Rails default page here. Rails uh, gives you Rails version, your Ruby version. You can see that the, uh, the photo on the uh, getting started guide here is a bit out of date. So this is the um, up. I started doing Ruby and I started doing Rails during version four. Um, and this was the uh, the yay yeah, you're on Rails screen from version four until um, a couple days ago. So now here, this is your um, your um, local version successfully running Rails, if we uh, go to the server here, uh, it's getting the root path and um, kind of giving you the, the default Rails welcome controller because we don't have any other routes set yet. So we'll stop there um, and we'll pick up with um, starting in that Hello Rails section in the next video. Want to create your own Ruby gem but don't know where to start? Code along with me on the end-to-end -end journey of the Nerd Dice project. We'll configure and publish the gem, use GitHub Actions to trigger builds and tests, and create magic methods with Ruby metaprogramming that can roll any number of dice, all while using a test-driven approach. Go to statelesscode.com slash nerddicegem to level up. Thanks for watching this Stateless Code video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. Check out our growing library of videos on our social media channels. Follow us at Stateless Code and Taxation is Theft.